You may or may not know that last year I was invited to take part in Project Pegasus, which was a project funded by SideFX Software uh, in order to demonstrate open world and world building workflows using Houdini and Unreal Engine. My role on the project was to develop the landscape, which was initially created by an artist called Ian Smith. And I worked through the basics of setting up the materials, decorating the terrain with assets, and also setting up procedural trails and paths. One of the pain points of working with uh, Houdini or generally trying to create paths inside of Houdini and Unreal Engine is that if you work inside of Houdini, then you sacrifice some of the customizability inside of Unreal. But if you work inside of Unreal, then you don't have access to the full powerful suite of tools that Houdini provides. Well, with a little bit of time sort of sitting in the back of my head, something sort of came along and reminded me that uh, I'd seen a little while ago uh, something inside of Unreal called the Scriptable Tools Framework. And I decided to look into it a little bit further. You can see, if you go to this link up here uh, on the Unreal Developer uh, website, you can see that they've released an experimental feature called Scriptable Tools. And essentially, what Scriptable Tools allows you to do is create a uh, mode inside of the editor, like the landscape edit paint mode, the uh, maybe the foliage painting mode, where you can interact with the viewport in a customized kind of way in order to create a sort of editor time behavior uh, and essentially empower artists to make better art faster. And this is really exciting. Uh, so I followed along with this tutorial. I'd recommend you take a look at it too. And the, the first basic example is just, you know, setting up uh, so that you click in the screen and you can spawn a sphere in the, in the scene there. So uh, that's what this example is showing. So I had a look inside of Unreal and went to the plugins because you need to enable a plugin. And I enabled the Scriptable Tools framework and I turned on the Scriptable Tools editor mode here as well as the Scriptable Tools framework. So I had both of these. And I also turned on Geometry Script, which is another feature that's relatively recent inside of Unreal Engine in order to manipulate geometry as well as PCG, which you may already be familiar with. So I turned on all of these because I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't missing any of the functions since each one comes with a whole suite of functions for creating procedural workflows inside of Unreal. But I'm a Houdini user and I didn't especially want to have to go through and sort of learn how to do everything inside of Unreal, not least because I suspect that given that it's a less mature toolkit that's currently under active development, you're just going to be able to do less. And one of the exciting things about working inside of Houdini and something that we set up inside of Project Pegasus was this kind of advanced pathfinding system where the paths would procedurally be generated along the terrain, avoiding steep areas or sharp inclines. And I wanted to see if I could find a way to combine the workflow that I use inside of Houdini with this new exciting scriptable tools framework inside of Unreal. So first things first, after installing the plugins, you can access the scriptable tools by going up to the selection mode. And you'll see that you now have a scriptable tools uh, mode down here at the bottom. And uh, this, as you can see, we've already got a little bit of a, a new UI set up with a tool that I've created already. So I'll just go ahead and demonstrate how that works. This is still uh, pretty much just minutes of development and uh, the plan is to take this a lot further, but I'll show you how it works already. So I click the tool and I enter the mode and you can see I can exit the tool by clicking complete. And this has now returned Unreal to its usual default kind of selection mode. But while in the tool, if I now click in the environment, I can customize what happens. And in this case, I'm creating these little widgets and you can see that the widgets are being stored in an array here on the side. And these widgets can also be interactive with at editor time. If I go ahead and complete, we can see that those widgets are destroyed. Okay, so now if I hold control and left click, you can now see that we're actually getting something. And what I've done there is I've specified that when I click control, um, I'm going to create the Pegasus Pathfinder digital asset as well as a blueprint path, so a spline path in blueprints. And this BP path is really simple. So I'll go and show you what that is. Jump inside of content, Pegasus workshop, workshop. It's gonna be presenting at everything procedural conference, by the way, in case you're interested in going. And I'll show you that the BP path is dead simple. All it is, is a an empty blueprint with a single spline inside of it, okay? So that's what's being created there. And when I run the tool, hold control and left click and then left click a few more times. It's creating the spline there. But all of these cubes 
they're not being instanced by the blueprint. They're actually being instanced by this pathfinder. So the, the goal with this pathfinder is to do something a little bit fancier later on. But right now, all it's doing, if I jump over to Houdini, is it's spawning cubes. So we can see that basically, if I open up this digital asset, it's as simple as they come. It takes the spline input from Unreal, resamples it so that you get cubes at set intervals and spawns the cube out, which is then being sent back to Unreal. So that's two incredibly simple elements. And we're starting to get somewhere really interesting. I'm going to end the tool there. So right now, I'm not saving anything to into the level permanently because I'm just exploring. And I, I was so excited, I just wanted to share this uh, with everyone straight away. Now, OK, let's do this again. Open the tool, control click, left click, left click, left click, left click. Uh, let's go all the way over here, left click, left click. OK, and we can see that as I click around, it's creating this spline. But not only that, I can grab these widgets. And if you've ever worked with splines inside of Unreal Engine, then you will know that working with splines on landscapes is a real pain in the proverbial uh, because you have multiple axes of freedom. And when you pull it horizontally, it's obviously going to disappear under the terrain. So straight away, what we get from the Unreal Editor mode here is the ability to drag the spline path just on a, the horizontal plane, and it's always going to sit on top of the terrain. So we have a really much nicer way of working with splines off the bat. Okay. The goal with this tool, which I'm hopefully going to go into demonstrating how this all works over the coming weeks and maybe months, is basically in between these spline sections, I don't just want the path to be conformed in a straight line. I'm going to use the fact that I'm communicating with Houdini to bring in all of that rich power of Houdini, keeping it real time inside of Unreal Engine and get paths which organically conform to the terrain and, and move along it. And it's all going to be in this really nice, uh, driven by this really nice, simple and interactive framework. So I'm incredibly excited to share more about this workflow with you. And uh, in the next video, I'll uh, probably dive into a little bit more of the how to, uh, how do we actually set this up? Ah, uh, you know what to hell with it. Let's do it now. So, okay, we've got our environment. We need a few elements. I'm not going to go through the whole setup, but just know that in order to access these scriptable tools, you need to go to Editor Utilities, Editor Utility Blueprint. And then what we can do so we can search for a scriptable tool. So I found the editor scriptable single single click tool, which is the one that comes basically just followed along with this tutorial. Oh, I've lost that tutorial page, but that one I'll post it in as a link down below. So you're going to create a single click tool, go inside of the single click tool. And now let's have a look. And there's a little bit of stuff going on here, but it's I'll break it down so it's simple enough to understand. Essentially, it runs based off of click events. So we can see there's this event on hit by click. And quite simply, you get this function by going up to functions and clicking override. And you'll see that you have this on hit by click function up here. Okay, so once that's created, you'll need to go back up to the functions again. And you'll also need to override test if hit by click. Okay, so again, just to repeat, this setup just follows that tutorial, uh, that documentation page. So if you get stuck, you can just go along and follow that. The important thing to know is that this tests if hit by click is uh, allowable, basically. We're saying um, we're going to get the position of a ray according to where the mouse is on the screen. We're shooting it into the world. And then we detect if we hit something. And if we do hit something, then we can make a ray hit. Then inside of the event graph, that other event I told you to override on hit by click, we're also grabbing the ray from the click position. We're grabbing the modifiers, but I'll talk about that later. We're, gr we're grabbing the ray. We're doing another trace into the scene. We're saying, did we hit anything, i.e. the landscape? If we did, we grab the location of the hit and we create a spline and we create a gizmo. So there's this modifier here which says, is control down? So if control is down, then we create the spline, which I'll go to later. But, but either way, we're going to create a gizmo. So that gizmo, if I just run the tool once more, that's what this is, okay? This is this is the gizmo, uh, and this is something that the editor scripting tools provides. So let's jump to the create gizmo function, and we're using this this function here, create trs gizmo. We're setting the name of each gizmo because that's its identifier as a string. So you, if you have a bunch of gizmos, they all need different names. 
We're setting the initial transform and we're specifying what control we want the user to have. So I'm saying you can only translate and only in the horizontal axes, okay? I add all of those gizmos to an array and then this can kind of be ignored for now. And basically, once those gizmos have been added to the array, we're going to add our first spline point, okay? So this spline point that we're adding requires a spline to exist. So if you remember, if we go back a little bit where this create spline function was, I'll jump inside of there. This function spawns that blueprint. So if I go and run it once more, it spawns that blueprint spline. You see BP path there that I was referring to. So that's what's happening here when we press control. And I'm making sure there are no spline, there are no points by default because we're going to create them all procedurally. All right, so create spl spline has been created and the first gizmo has been created. After the first gizmo has been created, we're adding a spline point as well on the same position, which is over here. We add a spline point to that spline, all right? Finally, we're doing something called update inputs. And this is where it gets a little bit confusing. So, so far we've just been thinking about Houdini creating spline points and down here we're moving spline points whenever a gizmo gets moved. So this is all Unreal centric. But like I said before, I wanted to be able to communicate with and spawn Houdini assets. And we can see that that is in fact happening. So I did a little bit of digging around and I discovered that there is an API for blueprints processing of Houdini digital assets, which I am slightly shocked isn't more noise isn't being made about because this is absolutely incredible for building custom tools inside of Unreal. The page is a bit of a wall of text, and to be honest, I haven't read through most of it or understood barely any of it, but all I needed to do was stumble across this image here. And actually there's two pages, and this one turned out to be the more useful one, Instantiate HGA Using API. So you could just peruse through here, try to make heads or tails of it, and then gradually realize that there's actually an example in inside of Unreal for us to go and check out. And that's exactly what I did. So I need to make sure that I've got Houdini engine plugin installed. I'm going to assume that you have that level of knowledge already. And I'm just going to go down to the settings of the content browser and I'm going to go show plugin and show engine content. That means if I jump inside of the engine and jump inside of plugins and start looking through, we can actually see if we go down far enough that there is some Houdini engine content hiding away inside of here. Okay. And if I go into the examples project and I go into the e -D -E -U -W -E -U -A folder, which stands for Editor Utility Actor. We can actually see, if I drag this out into the world, is it gonna work for me? Mm, doesn't look like it really wants to work, but that's not bad, that's no, no problem. But if we open this thing up, we can see we have an example of how all of these things are supposed to be set up and run. So you can control Houdini digital assets via blueprints. You can create sessions and sessions, set parameters on the digital assets and cause them to cook. So I just followed this template and we're gonna backtrack a little bit. So I've already been through what happens when you click, we create gizmo, we create some points, we, we decide what happens to those points, but we also need to now start thinking about controlling a digital asset, okay? So we can see that down at the bottom here, there's some stuff relating to digital assets. And there's a function called create digital asset that I've created there, but I must've called that somewhere. So let's go and find where I'm calling it. Well. The way that I'm doing it is I'm using this event on script start setup, which gets called automatically when you enter the mode. And I'm doing a few things. We can ignore this first part, but basically I'm creating a Houdini session and I'm creating the HDA in the scene, which is what happens here. We're checking if there's a valid Houdini session, which there should be. Uh, I might be doing some redundant work because if there isn't, it creates one. Yeah, my, my work is redundant. We're instantiating the asset, okay? Then we're making sure that we're storing the wrapper for that asset which is what we use to then receive other events such as this. And these are all a bit long and wordy, but the most important thing you need to know is that there are good stages in, in which you can set variables and parameters, or at least this is how it's set up inside of the, um, the example. I'm sure you could set them at other points too, but you wouldn't wanna try and set parameters before this had happened basically, or you wouldn't want to set parameters after the cook process. So this is a good time to set the parameters. In this case, I don't actually set any parameters. So this is just, might as well be empty. So, but that's where you would set them if you had a HDA with lots of parameters. And then over here, we've got update inputs, which I should probably actually rename to just run the digital asset. 
So this update inputs run digital asset, gets the spline points, and then on this branch, uh, where, which determines if there's more than two spline points, then we will make uh, we'll make a curve input, which I'll dive into. Set input, I think so. this is very Houdini Houdini centric stuff. But essentially, the most important thing is we recook the digital asset. Okay, so every time we make a change to the curve and this function gets called update inputs, we're recooking the digital asset. And um, if we jump inside of here to make curve input. Again, I, I highly encourage you to go and look. I just ripped this wholesale out of the, the example uh, template. Um, but essentially, we're configuring a curve input. All of this stuff is just about configuring a curve input. And then here, if I just move this last point down, this is the interesting bit. We're grabbing a spline, which is the BP spline from the blueprint. We're sampling it. Okay, so we're getting 100 uh, steps along the spline, convert, grabbing all those transforms, and then we're setting the curve points on a curve which gets sent to Houdini. So that's generating our Houdini curve. And then finally we're recooking. And that's it. So we're creating a curve. We've created a scriptable tool inside of Unreal, which spawns a spline inside of Unreal, which drives a digital asset, which can process the spline and do all sorts of cool stuff. And then we're taking that output and rendering it inside of Unreal. And with this, it would be possible to send both the landscape and the spline to Houdini, cause the spline to follow the contours of the terrain, deform the terrain. Well, essentially the world is erased because you have the, you know, everything you can do inside of Houdini is then suddenly available to you. And it's all exposed via this nice kind of interactive uh, framework that you can use. So I left one thing out, and that was the uh, the gizmo. Uh, this, sorry, the gizmo, the panel up here. So this panel contains settings, which you can, you know, the settings of the tool. And the way we set those up is just slightly different. To uh, you know, there's a little bit of a hoop to jump through. So I'll just quickly show you that as well. And I'll be going. I'll be doing all of this. This is a brief introduction. Um, I don't know how brief it actually is now. Um, it was intended to be a brief introduction. It's not really a, a workshop so much. Um, just, just, just sharing that this even exists, really. Um, but if I want to add parameters to the tool, then what I need to do is use this function called add property set of type. And there we go. So I need to create a parameter called settings, called which is a, of the type click tool settings on the click tool, because I called it click tool, and. I need to add a property set of type uh, settings uh, to that. So what does that mean? Well, essentially, I've created a property set. Here we go. Click tool settings, which is another blueprint, which literally just contains a list of the variables that I want to expose. So I'll say is on. I'll make it public. Pile and save. And now, because my tool already knows about it, we can see that that is on toggle gets added. So with that, with that integration between Houdini and Unreal, with the scriptable tools, with all of that, essentially, uh, the world is your oyster. So very excited to take this a bit further. And um, yeah, let me know uh, if you're curious, uh, you know, if you've got any questions or things you'd like to see.